dear viewers in this video we will learn the solution procedure of general second order circuits so to solve a second order circuit we will have to determine its step response so let's say that the variable that has to be determined is xt this xt this can either be current i it or can be voltage vt or both to determine the step response of this kind of second order circuits we generally follow four steps step number 1 determine the initial conditions so what are the initial conditions let's say the variable is xt so the initial condition will be x at time t equal to 0 and derivative of x at time t equal to 0 that means dx by dt this two and the final value that means x at time t equal to infinity in step number 2 we turn off the independent sources and find the form of transient response. The transient response is let's say x subscript t at time t and for determining this transient response we apply kcl and kvl equations so by applying KVL and KCL equation, once we have determined the transient response, we obtain a second order equation, differential equation. Now we check whether this particular differential equation is overdamped, underdamped, or critically damped. How do we do it? We compare alpha with omega naught. In step 3, we obtain the steady state response so let's denote the steady state response by x subscript s s which is a function of t is equal to x at time t equal to infinity here x at time t equal to infinity this is the final value of x which we have obtained in of 
trained in step number one. In step four, now we are in a position to obtain the total response. So, this total response is the sum of the transient response and steady state response. So, this is equal to transient response plus steady state response. So, we have found the transient response here in second step and we have found the steady state response in the third step. So, now we can find the total response like this x subscript t which is the transient response and x subscript s s t which is the steady state response. Now what is left? The left of R is to determining the constants associated with the transient response. Now, once we have found out the transient response, there had been some constants that we didn't find out. Those constant has to be found out by putting the initial conditions. So, we write here that we finally determine the constants associated with the transient response by imposing the initial conditions of x naught and dx naught by dt. Now let's look at a look at an example from the book of Alexander that is example 8.9 Alexander which will make the things more clear. So, the circuit is given as like this. There is a 12 volt DC source connected in series with a 4 ohm resistor and a 1 Henry inductor. There are two more parallel branches. One branch is having a capacitor. The value of the capacitance is half farad and the other parallel branch consists of two ohm register and a switch. The switch was open before time t equal to zero. That means from time t equal to minus infinity to time t equal to zero, the switch was open and the switch was closed at time t equal to zero. Now we have to find the complete response V and then I for time t equal to greater than 0 in the circuit. So, I is the current that flows through this inductor and V is the voltage across the capacitor. So, let's recapitulate the four steps that I have discussed earlier to find out the step response. The first step was to determine the initial conditions of the variable x and the derivative of that particular variable and its final value. So, now we first find the initial and final values at time t equal to 0 minus. 
so at time t equal to 0 minus what are the variables the variables are v and i so here in fact x is equal to v could be i also so at time t equal to 0 minus the circuit was in steady state because this 12 volt source has been kept with the circuit from time long before it is evident from this particular figure that if this 12 volt source is operating from a time long before then we can redraw the circuit as the 12 volt source goes like this 4 ohm resistor remains as it is this one henry inductor it will be a closed circuit and this particular switch was open so 2 ohm resistor is disconnected from the circuit and this particular branch is not remaining in the circuit and this half farad capacitor would behave like an open circuit so the circuit is almost like it here v amount of voltage will be increased and the current i would be flowing through the air and since it's a open circuit so i is equal to v so we can write that i at time t equal to 0 minus would be 0 amps and since I is 0, so no voltage will be dropped in this 4 ohm resistor and the entire 12 volt is dropped across the open circuit that means this capacitor. So we can write that V at time t equal to 0 minus would be equal to 12 volt. Now at time t equal to 0 plus what happens? At time t equal to 0 plus, this 12 volt source is connected with the circuit. This 4 ohm resistance remains. So, we can draw the circuit like this. This is 12 volt, 4 ohm resistor. Then the inductor is here. The value of the inductor is 1 Henry and here the switch is closed now so this particular branch of 2 ohm resistor is there and this particular capacitor is here so the voltage is plus V and this is the current I okay Let's denote this particular current to be IC. And now let us apply KCL at this particular point. So from here, if we apply KCL, applying KCL at node A, we can write that current entering is I and current outgoing is one is IC and the other is if the voltage here is V so voltage at point A is also V so it will be plus V divided by resistance voltage divided by resistance that means V divided by 2 since we have taken this particular equation at time t equal to 0 plus we can write that i at time t equal to 0 plus equal to ic at time t equal to 0 plus as v at time t equal to 0 plus divided by 2. Now what is i at time t equal to 0 plus? This particular current is the current through the inductor and we know that the current through the inductor cannot change abruptly. So this current I at time t equal to 0 plus must be equal to current at time t equal to 0 minus. So we have already found in the first step the current 
at time t equal to 0 minus which was equal to 0 ampere. So let us put i at time t equal to 0 plus equal to 0 is equal to i c at time t 0 t equal to 0 plus plus now we know that v at time t equal to 0 plus this voltage is the voltage across this capacitor and the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantly or abruptly. So it would be equal to the voltage at time t equal to 0 minus and we have found that voltage at time t equal to 0 minus across the capacitor is 12 volt. So this value we can put 12 by 2 and solving this particular equation we can write that IC 0 plus is equal to minus 6 amperes. Now we have to find the derivative of voltage V. We know that the voltage current relationship across a capacitor is equal to C dV by dt equal to IC or dV by dt equal to IC by C. Hence, we can write the dV0 plus which is the derivative of voltage across the capacitor that means d v0 plus by dt this would be equal to ic and what is the value of ic ic the value of ic is we, i write first ic0 plus divided by c that is equal to minus 6 divided by the value of c is the value of c is half farad that means divided by half equal to minus 12 volts per second. Lastly, in this step 1, we have to find the final values of this variable V. We have to redraw this particular circuit taking the time to be infinity. So at time t equal to infinity, this switch was closed and these voltages were impressed onto this particular circuit well enough time to take this particular circuit in a steady state. So let's redraw this particular circuit at time t equal to infinity. So the circuit if redrawn would be like this. There is the 12 volt source. The 4 ohm resistor is here. Since the circuit has already reached to the final state, steady state state, so this inductor will be a short circuit and the capacitor will be open circuit. So in fact, in this circuit, there are two resistors in series. One is 4 ohm, another is 2 ohm and there is a independent voltage source of 12 volt. So the total resistance is 6 ohm. And so the current, if I take current I here, so I would be equal to 12 volt divided by 2 plus 4, this much of ohm equal to 2 ampere. So I at time t equal to infinity would be 12 divided by 4 plus 2 equal to 2 amperes. So if we have found I at time t equal to infinity, now this is V at time t equal to infinity. So the V is nothing but the voltage drop across this 2 ohm resistor. The current flowing through this particular circuit is 2 ampere and here is a 2 ohm resistor. So 2 into 2, 4 ohm drop will be here. So V at time t equal to infinity would be equal to 2 into I at t time t equal to infinity that is 2 into 2 equal to 4 volt. These were all about step 1. Now step 2. In a step 2 we have to find out the transient response of the circuit. Transient response means the now the circuit is source free. So what we will have to do as per step 2. In step 2 we have seen that we have to turn off the independent sources and find the form of transient response. 
So if I turn off the sources, then the 12 volt sources is being replaced by a short circuit. Here is a 4 ohm resistor. Here is an inductor of 1 Henry. Here 2 ohm and the switch is closed. And here is the capacitor. This is V and this is I. This we are finding at time T is greater than 0. So if we apply KVL at the left node, then we can write here the voltage drop is 4 into I. Here in the inductor the voltage drop is L di by dt. So L is here 1 ohm. So 1 then di by dt plus here in the 2 ohm register the voltage drop is V because these two branches are parallel. So in the parallel branch same voltage is dropped. So this is equal to V and since there is no source in this particular circuit we can equate it to 0. So this is one equation. We can find by applying KCL at node A. So this is in left loop. Okay. So if we apply KCL at node A, we can write the incoming current to be I and the outgoing currents are here V by 2 and here it is IC. So I C could be written as per the voltage current relationship I C equal to C D V by D T. So we can write here plus the value of C is half farad and then D V by D T. This is equation number 2. Now the variable that we will have to find is V. So it is Evident that if we put the value of I from equation number 2 into the into equation 1, then we can easily find out the value of V. So putting the value of I from equation 2 to equation 1, putting the value of I from one, from 2 to equation 1 we get 4 into V2 plus half dV by dt plus d by dt of V by 2 plus half dV by dt plus V equal to 0 and this would give 2V plus 2DV by DT plus half DV by DT plus half D square V by DT square plus V equal to 0. That is if I write D square V by DT that means I am multiplying it by 2 okay plus 5 dv by dt plus 6 v equal to 0 so this is the differential equation that we have got so once we have got this differential equation we will have to find out the characteristics equation so to find the characteristics equation we just put dv by dt equal to s so that d square v by dt square is equal to s square. So now if we put it we get s square plus 5s plus 6 is equal to 0. That means s plus s square plus twice s plus thrice s plus 6 equal to 0 that is s plus 2 here if we take s common if we take 3 common then s plus 2 equal to 0 
which gives us s plus 2 into s plus 3 equal to 0. From here, we can very well write that the roots are s equal to minus 2 and s1 is minus 2 and s2 is minus 3. Thus, the natural or transient response is v n t equal to a e to the power s 1 t that means minus 2 t plus b e to the power minus 3 t. Okay. Where a where a and b are the unknown constant that we will have to determine later. And now the steady state response is steady state response is v s s t equal to v at time t equal to infinity which we have already found it to be 4 volts. Now we have the natural or transient response as well as we have the steady state response. So we can very well write that the complete response is equal to natural or transient response plus steady state response. So, the complete response is Vt which can be expressed as V subscript T T plus V subscript double S means steady state T. This is the complete response. Now, this steady state response is 4 volts. So, steady state response is 4 and the natural response is A e to the power minus 2t plus b e to the power minus 3t. So, a e to the power minus 2t plus b e to the power minus 3t. This is the complete response. So, finding steady state response was the third step and finding the complete response was the fourth step. Now, only thing is left that we have to find the value of a and b, these two constants we are un, uh, uh, these two constants are unknown we will have to find out their value so, now we will have to determine the values of a and b using initial conditions the initial conditions were v at time t equal to 0 equal to bar of volt that we have found out and dv0 by dt was minus 12 volt and the other was v at time t equal to infinity this was how much and v at time t equal to infinity was 4 volt so these were the initial conditions so let's apply these initial conditions 1 by 1. If we apply the first initial condition, that means we will have to put time t equal to 0 in that particular equation and we will put v 0 equal to 12. So, if we put these two, so what happens? The value of the voltage v naught is equal to 12 is equal to let us let me write down the equation first vt is equal to 4 plus a e to the power minus twice t plus b e to the power minus twice t this was the equation so now we are putting the value of v at t equal to 0 so this is equal to 12 and we will put the value of t to be 0 Now, e to the power minus 0 is equal to 1, e to the power minus 0 equal to 1. So, from here we can very well write that 12 equal to 4 plus a plus b, which gives us 
a plus b equal to 8. So this is one equation. The next initial condition is dv by dt equal to minus 12 volts. So we differentiate this equation. dVt by dt, if we differentiate 4, it gives us 0. If we differentiate this thing, it gives us 2a e to the power minus twice t. If we differentiate this thing, it comes minus 3b e to the power minus 3t. Okay? So, now if we have differentiated, now we put here at time t equal to 0, dv0 by dt was minus 12 volt. So, here we put minus 12 volt, here it is 0 plus minus 2a e to the power minus 2 into 0 minus 3b e to the power minus 3 into 0 that gives us 2a plus 3b equal to 12. This is number 2 equation. And now from this equation a plus b equal to 8 and 2a plus 3b equal to 12, we can very well find the values of a and b both because there are two equations, two unknowns. So from 1 and 2, we can write a equal to 12, b equal to minus 4. Now, if we just put back the value of a and b into this particular equation, this will give us the complete solution. So now, the complete response vt is equal to 4 plus the value of a is 12 e to the power minus 2t and the value is b is minus 4 e to the power minus 3t this is at t time t equal to greater than 0 now from b we can obtain the other quantities of interest and what was the quantity of interest we will have to find out I. So, we can obtain I. Okay. To obtain I, we can write the equation that I was equal to V by 2 plus half dV by dt. This equation we have derived before. So, this we can put the value of V here and we can get it like this 2 plus 6 e to the power minus twice t minus twice e to the power minus twice t minus 12 e to the power minus twice t plus 6 e to the power minus 3 t. How did I get it? V by 2. That means this entire thing divided by 2. So 4 by 2 equal to 2. 12 e to the power twice t by 2 equal to 6 e to the power twice t. 4 e to the power minus thrice t divided by 2 equal to 2 e to the power minus thrice t. So, this value is we have got and if we differentiate it and then put then we will be getting these two particular things. So, what was the differentiated value? The differentiated value was minus 2 a e to the power minus thrice t minus 3 b e to the power minus thrice t and the value of a and b is 12 and minus 4. We put this and then divide by 2, we will get 12 e to the power minus twice t plus 6 e to the power minus twice t. You just put it, calculate it, you will get it. If we further simplify this, we will get 2, here is 6 e to the power minus twice t, here is minus 12 e to the power minus twice t, means minus 6 e to the power minus twice t. Here we get plus 6 minus 2 that means plus 4 e to the power minus thrice t. This is at time t equal to 0 and this is the value of i. So these two things we have been told to find out. This is one and the other one was this one. Okay.